Thank you for joining us for the Q&A. <laughs> Just a few housekeeping statements before I bring the filmmaker back to the stage. Um, I will start the discussion and then I will turn it over to you. I'm sure you have questions. I'll repeat your question just to make sure everyone on stage hears it and everyone up in the balcony also hears it. And just a reminder that we want to keep the questions to this work. With that being said, please help me welcome back to the stage filmmaker Richard Linkletter. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys. That was fun. So my first question yeah. just has to be, um, was this movie as fun to make as it was to watch? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. I mean, you know, we can always use more, you know, more time and more money, but we did fine. You know, it was kind of an indie affair, but yeah, no, it was, it was fun. They were great. The whole cast and yeah, it was fun. We shot it in New Orleans. Yeah, I, li I like making movies. What can I say? I had a good time. <laughs> Uh, in addition to being the lead, playing the lead character, um, Glenn Powell also co-wrote co yeah. this with you. Can you talk a little bit about that collaboration? Yeah, it was during the pandemic. Uh, Glenn called me, and he had read this article by Skip Hollinsworth from the early 2000s, from Texas Monthly, a, a Texas magazine. And he asked, you know, he started talking about it. I said, Glenn, I read that article when it came out. I, I've known that character for, I've been thinking about that as a movie for a long time. This is like 2020. So I've been thinking about that for years. I'd had a couple meetings. I think it had been optioned a few times, but I just couldn't figure it out. And I said, and he was like gung-ho. He's like, I really like that character. I was like, I know, it's such a great character. What a weird world. It's really funny and strange, but just the same thing kind of happens over and over. The article, it's based on, ends probably about the time he lets her go. You know, he lets her off, the young lady. That's about where the article ends. And I said, I just don't see a third act or maybe even a second act. It's just the same thing over. And Glenn's like, well, what if we, you know, do we have to stick to the truth? So, you know, like, what if we did something? So I, you know, got this idea. It's like, well, what if she got back in touch? Oh, that's fascinating. Well, you'd be trapped in that identity. And it became, the, you know, from then on, it becomes kind of a Norish screwball comedy, whatever you want, you know, whatever it is. Uh, we just had fun from that point on. So it kind of felt cool. We had feet in a real character, real situation. That's all very real. But then, from that point on, it, it takes this complete flight of fancy. You know, we wanted, to, we wanted to take you on some kind of ride, you know. So. But we're upfront about it. You know, we said, we made that up. And I, I didn't want to make one of those films where we were like, oh, that never happened, that never I'm telling you, <laughs> that didn't happen, but hope you enjoyed the film. <laughs> you know, I'm not. I don't know. So it's when, it's when Madison... Um, comes into Gary's life that his charade starts to slowly crumble. I'm wondering <laughs> if you can talk a little bit about, and romance is often an inciting incident um, in your films. Can you talk a little bit about how you created that romantic arc between the two of them and how when Adria come up, came aboard, maybe she developed that character? Oh yeah, because Madison's character is really, it's, it's fictional, you know? Like Glenn and I did our best and we kind of had the parameters of that, but when Audrey came aboard, that's when she became a partner completely, the three of us. It was Glenn and I up to then, then she came aboard, and we just kept working on it. And, you know, a lot of rehearsal time, so much time together, thinking about it, talking it through. It was, you know, for me, it was a little plotty, you know, that last half, things are changing and moving. That's not usually uh, my thing, but I, I was just like, oh, we're kind of in the film noir, you know, genre. We're kind of in the screwball, you know, it was just kind of paying attention to genres and, having fun with it, but she had really strong feelings about Madison, you know, you couldn't, she kind of felt she knew that, knew her in some way. And so that was, it was, it's fun to work with actors who, I mean, are really smart, really funny, really great to work with, and, and just have strong opinions about their character, and they were so good together. I mean, they were just like, I don't know, it just worked from the, from the very beginning. They were, they were really wonderful. Speaking of a genre um, and the chemistry they two they have yeah. together, the moments between them felt a little bit reminiscent of maybe early '80s erotic thriller <laughs> territory. Yeah. Was that kind of in your consciousness? Yeah, it was kind of like 
it felt like a throwback, like this movie is like, it's kind of fun to be working on something like, yeah, I don't really make movies like this anymore. You know, like, you keep hearing all the time, oh, they're not good sex in movies. They're not, you know, no movie stars. I was like, well, this movie, we're trying to do all that. We're going to make it really sexy. Yeah, like some 80s, 90s, you know. But if, when we were making the movie, like when he's teaching class, we're like, oh, this is kind of the dead poets, uh, you know, <laughs> section of the movie. And then the we'd be at her house like, okay, this is the nine and a half weeks, you know. <laughs> And now we're in the, you know, so, yeah, genre, you can kind of have fun with it. But always it was like that scene near the end when they, he has the cell phone and they're, he's kind of directing her that, that crazy scene. It's like, that's kind of screwball comedy, you know, that, that was like Preston Serge's movie right there. No, I don't know. I don't, I don't flatter myself. It all comes together. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to the audience. Yes. And yes, yes. So close to the end, he might turn against her. So close to the end, it looked like he might turn against her. Was that ever an option in the writing? Well, everything's an option <laughs> in the writing. Um, you kind of work through all the ideas, though. You know, you, a lot of your first impressions, first ideas, you know, they're kind of cliches, maybe something you've seen. You've seen all the movies and like the. You know, so you're kind of like, okay, we're in film art. What are the rules, you know? Okay, the poor schlub, he either ends up in jail or prison. You know, he's either in prison or dead. She either, she set him up, she gets away with it. You know, these, are, these have been done a lot. Like, our take was like, well, what if after that strange beginning, but they actually are, this is kind of the romantic comedy part, like, what if they're really meant for each other? So we had our end game was like, no, they're actually the perfect couple. We just have to get there. You know, so by the time we got closer to it, no, we weren't, we weren't, that was off the table. We were like trying to get them together somehow. So it was just, yeah, we weren't, we, were, we had dropped film noir and we were into screwball, I guess. But it's fun to think of all that, you know. Uh, yes, in balcony. Oh yeah, we just showed up with a camera and they did. Yeah, they're amazing. No, fuck no. We, we, <laughs> I can't tell you how much we worked on that scene. Weeks, weeks, rewriting it. We'd rehearse it every night. We would just, that was like a centerpiece. We, we, we worked on that scene forever. I don't improvise. Yeah, it was fun. Even while we're shooting, it's like, and that scene had to work. You know, you don't, you don't have a movie if that didn't work. Great question. Uh, in the back, yes. Did people react like you thought they would, especially at the end when he was killed with the bag? Yeah, I mean, it's fun Mo making movies. You're, you're, in a genre, you're in a bubble. You know, you think it's funny or weirdly funny. The actors, we, we think it's funny or creepy or, you know, whatever we're thinking. But it's, it's, it's fun to hear the, the reaction. But, um, yeah, like I thought, yeah, like I hoped, you know, they would respond mostly, like the humor of it. And uh, yeah, little subtle things. It's always great when people seem to pick up on on all that. So, no, it's it's fun. Thank you. Yes. Can you talk a little more about your friendships and collaborations with Glenn Powell over the last couple movies? Can you talk a little bit more about your collaboration with Glenn Powell? Yeah, I've known Glenn for not quite 20 years. I knew I worked with him. He was a teenager. He, I cast him in I was, the movie Fast Food Nation. I just had a scene in a high school, and people say, oh, it was, it was a small part, but, I mean, I cast him. You know, hundreds of teenagers, I'm like, yeah, that guy's, I kind of like that guy. What, what's up with that guy? And uh, so I met him then, but the real leap was, it just felt like a few years in my life, but it was a lot in his life, let's say 16 to 23 or 4, when I cast him, and, and everybody wants some. He came in on that in an audition, and I was like, holy shit. Glenn, he's just this, wh where'd he come from? You know, he was like so smart and funny and charming. I was like, wow. He was exactly what I was looking for for the character he plays in that movie. So that was just fun. I just, you know, love actors and, you know, always hoping to work with people again. The only sad thing in this world is there aren't enough parts or, you know, there's so many actors I've worked with I would love to work with again. 
but he came in and did a day on Apollo 10 and a half, the one before, just kind of doing me a favor. And then he called me up on this. So, you know, just forget. You don't know how it works out, but um, yeah, he's, he's a wonderful collaborator. He's just a great actor, super smart. You know, it's just kind of the ideal collaborator. It's kind of, you know, I've, I've had that with, you know, it's like working with Ethan Hawke or something. You know, he's just like smart guy. You're just who you enjoy working with. And talented, you can't, that's the main thing. Yes, sir. You. So comedy is always so tricky, and yeah. um, could you talk a little bit about how you figure out who your victims should be? <laughs> the victims, yeah. Well, it's it's that does come up. Like it's kind of like, is Jasper almost too likable? Does he deserve to die? You know, you, you kind of like hey, he's kind of, but he's a bad guy on paper. Come on. So you you know you kind of at least I mean I personally don't think he deserves the death penalty for being a bad guy or whatever horrible person he is, but. It, we can incorporate that into our into our movie, kind of, hopefully, and you know, I don't know what the right word is, get away with it, you know. But uh, and the other victim, yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a trope. You sort of stack the deck against someone, and then <laughs> <laughs> both those guys, we're better off with them out of the gene pool, right? <laughs> so uh, no, I don't know. It's a it's a complex question. But your real question was about comedy. So hopefully what I just described is funny, too. I don't know. Um, I have a question I'm kind of teasing out, but this, this idea that the self is kind of performative or a bit of a construct has existed forever. Um, with social media, it certainly seems like personal branding and that type of play has yeah. really accelera accelerated quite a bit. So for Gary, even though most of his transitions are very analog, um, mm -hmm. is there a sense that this situation gave him permission to play with who he could possibly be. Yeah, well, that, that theme of identity, self, kind of the mutability of, of the self, I think that came up probably, it's not really in the article. I mean, Gary, the real Gary Johnson would assume these identities and kind of play a character, not to the extent we do in the movie, of course, but he did play with that, but I think between 2001 and by the time we're making the movie, this century had happened, social media had happened, and you think about, you know, the notion of self or identity is probably more unstable <laughs> than ever. You know, anyone can kind of be anyone online. You know, the social media world has changed so much, and just, um, so I think that was the air we were breathing as we were working on the script, so we were kind of able to bring in, bring in all that, but I, I just think, you know, it's, it's both an ancient, question, know thyself, you know, it's something we always, humanity's always confronted, but it seems like that's just so accelerated now, you know, what is truth, everything's inverted, it's just such a kind of accelerated time right now, and I think we're all feeling it, so, you know, everything's kind of on the table, so it just felt like it, that could, you know, we didn't over-intellectualize it, but it was just kind of like, yeah, this is, what makes something interesting to you? It's just something you're kind of picking up in the world or something you've taken on. Where I, I just go, that's my long answer to saying, probably wouldn't have done that 20 years ago. But from what you said, it's like, yeah, it's something, something, human, like human these things are under kind of maybe assault, you know, <laughs> in, our, in our brains. I think we have time for one more question. Um, oh, the very top, yes, the very top. Oh. <laughs> That's my cousin. Uh, writing about a character who was a philosophy <laughs> professor, was that complex or did it help you get your themes across better? No, it was great. It's the second part of that. I mean, because, you know, it's a nice, 
set up in a movie, I think, to have someone have a forum like that. I mean, the real Gary Johnson is, was an instructor. You know, he, he taught college. He was very passionate about it. He's this Jungian kind of psychologist, Buddhist, dude, very fascinating guy. I got to know him. And he passed away right before we started shooting. But, uh, yeah, fascinating guy. But I thought, oh, that's a great uh, device, I guess. It's who he is. But then, yes, you can kind of hit your themes and communicate your story in a, in, from a different angle that way. You know, it's like throw out thoughts to hover above the whole. I mean, that's like screenwriting trick, maybe. <laughs> screenwriting, you know, just it, everything feeds in. You know, a movie's like a short story. Everything should just feed into this one thing. So almost everything he says feels like it's on point in some way, maybe. Try not to be obvious about it, but, you know. Anyway. It's, it's such a smart, fun romp. Thank you so much oh. for sharing it with well, us. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you guys, man. This was so fun. Thank you guys for being here, really. We love Toronto, man. <laughs> Thanks a lot.